A blessed and pleasant good morning, my brothers and sisters in Christ, and welcome to another edition of Morning Prayer brought to you by the Anglican Diocese of Belize. Today is the 15th day of December. Let me tell you, 15 songs like halfway. <laughs> I don't know how time seems to be running. It is, I can't tell what it's like outside. My windows are closed because it is raining cats, dogs, elephants, lions, tigers, and bears outside of my window. But I know it's a beautiful day because even when you can't see it, the sun is still shining. Yes, it is. Today, we're going to start things one. We're going to start things off with one entitled how long their lord how long let's have a listen how long dear savior oh how long shall this pride our delay fly swift around ye wheels of time fly swift around ye wheels of time and bring the promised day from the third heaven where God resides, that holy happy place. The new Jerusalem comes down, the new Jerusalem comes down, adorned with shining grace. The down to men removes his blessed abode men the dear objects the of dear his grace men the dear objects of his grace and, and he the loving god men the dear objects the of dear his grace men the dear objects of his grace and he I am not certain if you were able to hear that one and I'm not certain if you could hear me because the rain is so hard outside my window that I am not sure if you are able to hear anything at all outside of the rain. I am here sniffling because yesterday I got caught in the rain and as you could probably hear in my voice, it doesn't sound all that good. But we press on for the glory of Jesus. Amen and amen. We're going to get our words here up on screen for today. And let's see if we could make that happen in three, two, and one. There we are. Morning prayer for today, December the 15th in 2021. In the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. If you are following along in your books of common prayer, we are on page 35 using verse 1. Blessed be the Lord our God, by whose grace we are yet alive. Blessed be his Son, Jesus Christ, by whose rising we are set free. Blessed be the Spirit of God, in whom is our hope and our joy. Our invitatory prayer. Father, we come together in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Redeemer. To offer you our worship, praise, and thanksgiving. To you belong all power and glory. You are the source of all goodness. Let our worship bear witness to your peace and saving power. Through your spirit, may we ever rejoice in the abiding presence of our risen and ascended Lord. Amen. At this time, we have our first canticle for this morning. The canticle, the Jubilate, which is based on Psalm 100. And if you are following along in your books of common prayer, can be found on page 37. O oh, shout to the Lord in triumph all the earth. Serve the Lord with gladness and come before his face with songs of joy. Know that the Lord, he is God. It is he who has made us and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Come into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and bless his holy name. For the Lord is good, his loving mercy is forever, and his faithfulness throughout all generations. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. At this time, we pause to settle our hearts and our minds as together we 
call to mind those things that yesterday, perhaps this morning, in thought, word, or deed we would have done that might have been displeasing to Almighty God, that might have been unjust to our neighbors, that perhaps would have been unkind even to our very selves. For these times and these moments, Lord, we pray to you for the forgiveness of our sins. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things done and left undone. And so uphold us by your Spirit, that we may live and serve you in newness of life, to the honor and glory of your name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Set us free, O God, from the bondage of our sins, and give us the liberty of that abundant life, which you have made known to us in your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. At this time, we have the reading of our psalm, and our psalm for this morning is Psalm 119, verse 49 through to 72. Let's have a listen. Psalm 119, verse 49 through to 72. Remember your word to your servant, because you have given me hope. This is my comfort in my trouble, that your promise gives me life. The proud have derided me cruelly, but I have not turned from your law. When I remember your judgments of old, O oh Lord, I take great comfort. I am filled with a burning rage because of the wicked who forsake your law. Your statutes have been like songs to me wherever I have lived as a stranger. I remember your name in the night, O oh Lord, and dwell upon your law. This is how it has been for me because I have kept your commandments. You only are my portion, O oh Lord. I have promised to keep your words. I entreated you with all my heart. Be merciful to me according to your promise. I have considered my ways and turned my feet towards your decree. I hasten and do not tarry to keep your commandments. Though the cord of the wicked entangle me, I do not forget your law. At midnight, I will rise and give you thanks, because of your just and righteous judgments. I am a companion of all who fear you, and of those who keep your commandments. The earth, O Lord, is full of your love. Instruct me in your statutes. O Lord, you have dealt graciously with your servant, according to your word. Teach me discernment and knowledge, for I have believed in your commandments. Before I was afflicted, I went astray, but now I keep your word. You are good and you bring forth good. Instruct me in your statutes. The proud have smeared me with lies, but I will keep your commandments with my whole heart. Their heart is gross and fat, but my delight is in your law. It is good for me that I have been afflicted, that I may learn your statutes. The law of your mouth is dearer to me than thousands in gold and silver. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our second canticle for this morning is canticle number 11, the third song of Isaiah. Arise, shine, for your light has come. And the glory of the Lord has dawned upon you. For behold, darkness covers the land, 
and deep gloom enshrouds the peoples. But over you the Lord will rise, and his glory will appear upon you. Nations will stream to your light, and kings to the brightness of your dawning. Your gates will always be open. By day or night they will never be shut. They will call you the city of the Lord, the Zion of the Holy One of Israel. Violence will no more be heard in your land, ruin or destruction within your borders. You will call your walls salvation and all your portals praise. The sun will no more be your light by day, and by night you will not need the brightness of the moon. The Lord will be your everlasting light, and your God will be your glory. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. I apologize for this sniffling that I keep doing. I promise I will not walk in the rain today too much. Our Bible reading for this morning comes from the book of Zechariah, chapter 3, verse 1 through to 10. Let's have a listen. A reading from the Word of God, written in the book of Zechariah, chapter 3, reading from verse 1 through to 10. Then he showed me the high priest Joshua, standing before the angel of the Lord, and Satan standing at his right hand to accuse him. And the Lord said to Satan, The Lord rebuke you, O Satan. The Lord who has chosen Jerusalem rebuke you. Is not this man a brand plucked from the fire? Now Joshua was dressed with filthy clothes as he stood before the angels. And the angels said to those who were standing before him, Take off his filthy clothes. And to him he said, See, I have taken away your guilt from you, and I will clothe you with festal apparel. And then I said, Let them put a clean turban on his head. So they put a clean turban on his head and clothed him with the apparel. And the angel of the Lord was standing by. Then the angel of the Lord assured Joshua, saying, Thus says the Lord of hosts, If you will walk in my ways and keep my requirements, then you shall rule my house and have charge of my court. And I will give you the right of access among those who are standing here. Now listen, Joshua, high priest, you and your colleagues who sit before you, for they are an omen of things to come. I am going to bring my servant the branch, for on the stone that I have set before Joshua, on a single stone with seven facets, I will engrave its inscription, says the Lord of hosts, and I will remove the guilt of this land in a single day. On that day, says the Lord of hosts, you shall invite each other to come under your vine and fig tree. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. An interesting reading from the book of Zechariah. And if you afford me a couple of seconds to get back to the beginning of the reading. And let's get it back up on screen. Here we go. Mm -hmm. An interesting reading from the book of Zechariah. And why is it interesting? It's interesting because, well, we're in the third chapter of Zechariah. And this one is talking about the cleansing of Joshua, the high priest. And it's interesting because... In Zechariah's vision, now remember, Zechariah's visions and his prophecies were always filled with colorful and wonderful visions. And his vision so far was mainly of him in a place where he is surrounded by angels who are interacting with the Holy One. And the Holy One is giving the angels instructions and the angels then in turn give Zechariah instructions as to what must take place on earth. But now the I guess I want to call it the nature, but it's not really the nature. But things are going to change in the vision because now a new individual is being introduced. Well, two actual new individuals are being introduced. There's the cleansing of Joshua the high priest. But even before the cleansing, Satan is standing, I mean, there in the midst of the angels of the Lord. And the angel of the Lord stands against Satan 
on Joshua's behalf. And it's interesting that it's a clear picture in the vision of how the angel of the Lord, the angels of the Lord will come against the enemy in order to do what is right for one who is committed to God. And that is a key point for this morning that we are going to be discussing. And this vision, then the angel showed me Joshua the high priest. And Joshua was the high priest at this time of um, the vision. Haggai, in, in, in first Haggai, we heard that Joshua was in charge. And in his vision, Zechariah saw the high priest in the presence of the Lord. He was standing before the angel of the Lord. And the high priest was clothed in filthy garments. And some theologians believe that the filthy garments could either represent the sins of the people that the priest was coming to pray for before God or his own sin. But most believe it was the sins of the people because at the time, the priest was the, in, well, the, still is, the priest is considered to be the intermediary between the people and God. And the priest at that time was supposed to bring the prayers and the concern and, and the guilt of the people, the sins of the people before God. And this is who would be responsible for making the sacrifices for a Atonement to bring mercy from God. And it is still a priestly tradition that these are some of the responsibilities of the priest. For instance, when you message and say to me, Reverend, such and such is having an issue or I am having an issue. Could you kindly pray for me? It is not that you can't pray for yourself. Of course you can. And the Lord wants to hear from you. But through the order of Melchizedek, passed down through generation to generation until it got to simple, humble little me, the responsibility of bringing the concern and the prayers of the people before God was a part of the duty of the priest. And there is Joshua standing in the presence of God. And Joshua wasn't in God's presence just as a spectator, but he was there as a ministering priest. Yes. And Satan is standing at his right hand to oppose the priest. <laughs> when I read that yesterday. I was a bit concerned because there are days when I feel like literally the forces of evil are against me and they are trying to be just stumbling blocks in my way. But my mantra is always simple. Yes. My mantra, my mantra is always get thee behind me, Satan, or it is Satan recognize that while you can slow the work of God, slow the work of God with your antics, you can't stop it. And because you can't stop it, I will persevere. Yes. But it's interesting that here in Zechariah's vision, it is plain for him to see that he who is trying to do good for the glory of God and for the good of God's people is met with opposition and by the forces of evil, the great evil one himself. You know, and yeah. In as much as you ask your priest to pray for you, please thank you. Pray for your priest. Yes. And Satan hated the whole scene. Yes. He hates it when God's people come into the presence of the Lord. He hates it when they come into God's presence to serve and honor the Lord. He hates it when he tries very hard to with either positive or negative things because the devil can give you positive in order to get you to feel that it is better to go after the positive things than to go after God. And when you choose to go after God, he more than likely will bring negative things because he's getting, he's trying to get you to feel or to think that here you are trying to do good. Here you are following after God and all of these hardships befall you. Yes. He's a sneaky fellow. That one. Yeah. The great deceiver. That is who he is. And Satan it is believed by theologians that Satan must have been the one who put the filthy clothes on Joshua, declaring forcefully that Joshua was unfit to stand before the Lord in this office of priest. Yes, it is believed by theologians that it could have been a character assassination. Uh, what's that word? A character assassination. Ta-da, I got it. It could be that it was a character assassination that Satan was bringing against Joshua to cause Joshua and all the heavenly beings to feel that Joshua was not fit for this work. But like I've mentioned several times last week, God doesn't always call the equipped, but he always equipped those whom he calls. And so as Joshua stood there in this filthy clothes, 
with this with satan standing across from him the angel of the lord standing before joshua said take off his filthy clothes and then said to joshua see i have taken away your guilt from you and i will clothe you in festal apparel yes because the truth is the only thing worse than having satan as an adversary is to have him as a friend yeah very negative very bad to have satan as your enemy but even worse to have him as your friend and sometimes when we allow ourselves to be convinced to deceived by the lies and the deception of the devil we side with him in our thoughts and we when we side with him or we believe his deceptions we side against god so then if you're not on the lord's side whose side are you leading on you see the point and it's sad because it's a very convincing argument from the devil a lot of times and it becomes easy it becomes easy for individuals to throw in the towel, throw up their hands, say that they can't. You know? I have this thing that people always chuckle about. I always tell people, you really can't talk bad about me, you know? Yes? So you could say, huh, look pandali, short, overweight, reverend, who behaves so and so. And it never offends me. You know why? Because it's the truth. More than likely, when I meet people, they, I will tell them, okay, they will say, okay, so you are, and I would go, I am just an ordinary girl trying to do an extraordinary job for God. Yes, because it's the truth. I am not special because I have been blessed to hold the position of priest and to carry out this vocation is as best as I can is my mission. And that doesn't make me any more special than you or anybody else. It is a constant struggle between good and evil where hopefully we continue to choose good. Yeah? And it is a constant struggle when the enemy will come and the enemy will say, but look, they're not putting attention. But look, they don't care. But look, they're not putting in the pound of weight. But look, you've been striving at this and you can't. But look, a better job over there. But look, you could have had this. But look at the things that he has cost you by following after him. And the enemy will come time and time again. And he will fling dirt. And he will smear. And he will listen. If you think people don't talk negative about Rev because Rev is called Rev, you are wrong. They still do. They still do. I have had individuals come up to me to tell me that my behavior is going to cause a smear on the church and my behavior would simply would have been perhaps the people I choose to associate with. Because that's the way the enemy works. He will always try to bring you down. But this is where our faith gives us hope. And here now, in verse 5, we see that while Joshua is standing before the angels and the enemy has tainted him with filthy clothes, we see something special happens. Because after the angel says to Joshua, I will take away your dirty clothes and put you in festal apparel. Yes? Zachariah chimes in. Zechariah, as one of the faithful of God that exists in the same time and space as Joshua, chimes in. Yeah? And Zechariah, in addition to the clean apparel, the festal apparel, Zechariah says, let them put a clean turban on his head too. Dress him up more. And that is important because here we see that one of his own recognize that what was coming against him was evil and recognized that there was value in him for him to continue to do his job as priest. That he is encouraging him to continue by requesting that a clean turban, in addition to the festal apparel, be put on him. And that is our rule. When we hear negativity about someone, when people are slandering and flinging dirt, when the enemy is coming against the hardest against one of our own, it is not the time for us to jump on the bandwagon and help to press them down. It is our time to lift them up. 
to help to clean them off, dust them, polish them, and help them to rise back to where they're supposed to be. And it is easy to kick a man when he is down. But it is so much more difficult to not side with negativity and to keep kicking. But instead, stand in the midst for or stand for. Yes? It's, it's interesting, you know. Because when you side with someone who is being persecuted, the likelihood of you being persecuted is high. <laughs> Is high. But it's a risk we have to take. The angels were standing on behalf of Joshua before the assault of the devil. And Zechariah himself got involved. And then in verse 6 we hear it. Yes. The angel of the Lord assured Joshua saying. Thus says the Lord of hosts. If you will walk. In my ways and keep my requirements, then you shall rule my house and have charge of my court, and I will give you right access among those who are standing here. The angel is encouraging Joshua. Continue in the way of what is right, even in the midst of the hardships. Keep doing what I require of you, and you will have right access among these angels here that you see. And it's interesting because, firstly, the angel rebuked Satan. Yes? The Lord rebuked you, Satan. Yeah? And God does allow Satan to attack and harass his people. We know it of Job. Yes? But he strictly regulates what Satan is allowed to do. We know it of Job. But even in the rebuke, we too must stand against. And it's interesting because Joshua as the priest in this vision represented all of Israel. And all of Israel was stained with sin. And the representation of Joshua's filthy clothes is just that. But here the Lord was saying, I will remove from you these sins and transgressions. Okay. Yeah. But as much as Satan had a lot to accuse both Joshua and Jerusalem for, they had an even greater advocate in the angel of the Lord. We have a greater advocate. Our iniquities can be removed. We can be given garments that are washed and clean like snow. And there was this song that I used to love, Though your, skin, though your sins be as scarlet, Yes, he can make them white as snow. The accusations could come on seemingly solid ground. We will all be guilty to some extent standing before God. Nevertheless, the Lord fixes the problem by cleansing us and taking away our filthy garments and the iniquity that they represent. If we but ask of him. And God's message to Joshua the high priest is a personal admonition and promise. If you will walk in my ways and will keep my commandments. And that's it. It's an encouragement for us as well. Only be strong and very courageous that you may observe to do according to all the law which Moses, my servant, had commanded you. Which is what Joshua was told. Yes, by the Lord. And only if we could turn from everything and to the right hand and prosper in doing what is right for God. It was simple. It was simple. It is still simple. A reading that shows us that hardships, trials, temptations, tests will come. But if we persevere with God, yeah, we will succeed. And I love how the reading ends. The reading ends there, heading from verse 8 to verse 10, with a prophetic message of a Messiah and his reign. 
Huh? I am bringing forth my servant, the branch. Yes? I'm going to bring my servant, the branch. And the term branch is used several times as a title for the Messiah. Yes? And the branch is associated with the fruitfulness of life because nobody wants to bring forth a branch that is dead and dry up. And Jesus uses the same image when he calls himself divine and says that we are the branches and we must abide in him. Yes? And it was a fruitful branch that the Lord would bring forth and a stone that he would lay forth the seven facet stone. And if a branch seems weak in some analogy, then the Lord gave a different picture, a stone with seven eyes. And what is harder than stone? Yes? And in the thinking of the ancient world, of course, eyes represented knowledge because we learn more through what we see and take in than any other way. And so the seven eyes spoke to perfection and, full, and fullness of knowledge and wisdom of the Messiah. Yes? And not only will you be a branch to bear fruit, but you will also be a seven-facet stone, wise. And you will be engraved with the inscription. Yes? And this inscription, early Christians saw the engraving on stones to be pictures. Yes? Because they didn't have books like we know. For the most part, papyruses came in the time of Jesus, not before. And the engraving on stone were marks of identification or beautification of, of good things. And in all of this prosperity, when the day of the Lord of hosts come, there would be such joy that everyone would invite his neighbor to come under his vine and under his fig tree. And it is a proverbial expression of prosperity and peace. And it, the contrast between how the reading started with a Joshua standing before the Lord in filthy clothes being brought with guilt. Yes? To how it ends with prosperity, peace, and, and harmony. Yes? Being that which the Lord promises in the end. And how fitting, how fitting to recognize that though our sins be as scarlet, they can be washed and we can be made as white as snow. That is our promise. If the enemy makes you feel less than, don't be alarmed. Because you belong to he who is greater than anything else. <laughs> Amen. Let us continue then with the profession of our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. Together we say, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, the Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, He rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. As our Savior has taught us, so let us pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. For our suffrages this morning, we use suffrage A on page 43. Lord, reveal your love among us that we may know the joy of your salvation. Grant peace within and among all nations, and teach our leaders wisdom. Endow your church with faithfulness, and her servants with knowledge and true godliness. Defend, O Lord, the rights of the poor and the oppressed, that your justice may be known among all people. Lord, renew your spirit within us, that in us and through us your will may be done. Our first call it for this morning, 
is the collect for the third Sunday of Advent. Let us pray. Stir up your power, O Lord, and with great might come among us. And because we are sorely hindered by our sins, let your bountiful grace and mercy speedily help and deliver us. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. Together we say, I call it for peace. Eternal God, in whose perfect kingdom no sword is drawn, but the sword of righteousness, no strength known, but the strength of love. So mightily spread abroad your spirit, that all peoples gathered under the banner of the Prince of Peace, as children of one Father, to whom be dominion and glory now and forever. Amen. At this time, we turn to our personal prayers of intercessions and thanksgiving. This morning, we would like to extend birthday greetings to the following individuals. Celebrating birthdays today are Miss Millicent Casey, Mr. Ernan Bennett, Mr. Randy Sanchez, and Mr. Sean Mejia. We pray, ladies and gentlemen, that you will have a blessed and beautiful birthday, and that indeed God's blessings will be upon you for all the remaining days of your lives. Happy birthday! We continue to give Almighty God thanks for persons who have recovered from illness and surgery, and we continue to pray for persons who are on the road for healing and recovery. We remember in our prayers Miss Judith, Miss Ines, Miss Pauline, Miss Rose, Miss Grace, Miss Celine, Miss Maria, Miss Norma, Miss Mary, Miss Marilyn, Miss Veroline, Miss Abelina. We pray for Miss Monica, Miss Eileen, Miss Des, Miss Aislin, Miss Justine, Miss Lisa. Miss Soila, Miss Beryl, Miss Janet, Miss Nina, Miss Elena, and Miss Louise. We pray for Miss Margaret, Miss Sylvia, Miss Janice, Miss Dylan, Miss Alma, Miss Leslie, Miss Crystal, Miss Amelia, Miss Valencia, Miss Elona, Miss Fiona, and Miss Catherine. We remember and pray for Miss Betty, Miss Rita, Miss Marva, Miss Marcia, Miss Selena, Miss Jessica, Miss LaShawn, Miss Althea, Miss Anisetta, Miss Ruby, Miss Carolyn, Miss Kim. We pray for Miss Agnes, Miss Martha, Miss Loretta, Miss Barbara, Miss Harris, and Miss Arlette, Miss Leolid, Miss Geraldine, Miss Glenda, Miss Dominic, Miss Olga, and Miss Bernadette. We remember in our prayers the following of our brothers. We remember and pray for Mr. Zane, Mr. Larry, Mr. Kenrick. Mr. Wilfred, Mr. Marvin, Mr. Philip, Father Eric, and Mr. Walter. We remember and pray for Mr. Rudolph, Mr. Finley, Mr. Costa, Mr. Oscar, Mr. Freddy, Mr. Dion, Mr. Charles, Father Hardy. We pray for Mr. Eliseo, Mr. Rupert, Mr. Enrique, Mr. Robert, Mr. Rodney, Mr. Ismael, Father Jerry's, and Mr. Edmundo. We remember and pray for Mr. Dudley, Mr. Dion, Mr. Alfred, Mr. Ian, Mr. Michael Griffith, Mr. Michael Samuels, Mr. Michael Soberanis, and Father Constancio. We pray for Mr. Leroy Jr., Mr. Kurt, Mr. Mark, Mr. Jeffrey, and Mr. Ian. In our prayers, we continue to pray for comfort for those who are grieving the loss of a loved one. We continue to pray for the family of Miss Lisa Garnett, the family of Mr. Rick Jeffries, the family of Mr. Philip Gillett, and the family of Mr. John Usher. We pray that God's comfort and peace will be upon all those who are grieving at this time, and we pray for return and rest for those who have died. We continue to pray for God's protection over those of our loved ones who are far away from us. We remember in our prayers our students praying for Tammy, Anwa, Karina, Courtney, Ashley, Akua, Brittany, and Ria. We remember and pray as well for those in the military, praying for Emile, Jade, Charles, Barry, and Alvin 
at this time. We continue to, in our prayers, pray for the protection and the enablement of all our medical professionals in the performance of their duties. We remember in our prayers Dr. Molina, Dr. Manzanero, Dr. Sho Green, Dr. Arana, Dr. Joseph, Dr. Eck, Dr. Lawrence, Dr. Sosa, and Dr. Cuellar. We pray for our nurses, praying for Nurse McKin, Nurse Gill, Nurse Herrera, Nurse Orell, Nurse Cherie, Nurse Joyce Lynn, Nurse Alberta, Nurse Aaron, Nurse Alejandra, Nurse Olivia, and Nurse Julie. We remember all those who work in the hospital system, our medical system, even those who are working in clerical positions and those who are cleaners and adlies in the hospital. We pray for God's blessing and protection over them. We continue in our prayers to pray for persons who are infected with COVID-19. We remember and pray for those in the various isolation wards. We pray for those who are isolated at home. We continue to pray for persons who are feeling overwhelmed, either waiting for their vaccination or waiting for a test result from this COVID. We continue to pray for the ready availability of a cure or a vaccine. And indeed, we pray for the containment and, in, and elimination of this COVID-19. In our prayers, we continue to pray for the combating of the economic fallout caused by this pandemic. We pray for persons who are struggling to make ends meet, those whose salaries would have been reduced, those who lost employment, for all who are having a difficult time. We continue to pray for the most vulnerable in our society, praying for the poor, the needy, the elderly, those with pre-existing health conditions. We continue to remember and pray for God's wisdom, protection, and discernment over our security forces, the government, persons in positions of public trust and authority, the churches, the private sector, and all non-governmental organizations involved in the fight against COVID-19. We continue to pray for the members of the international community and those most severely affected by this pandemic. And we pray for ourselves and our region against the ravages of natural disaster. And we remember in our prayers those who are recovering from the effects of natural disaster. For the prayers of our hearts that our tongues cannot confess, we pray that Almighty God would hear our prayers. We conclude our intercessions by praying together. Almighty and eternal God, sanctify and govern our hearts and bodies in the ways of your laws and the works of your commandments, that under your protection now and ever, we may be preserved in body and soul through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. By means of announcement, brothers and sisters, I want to thank you so much for joining me for morning prayer this morning. It is indeed a blessing and a privilege to be able to come into the presence of Almighty God to start this new day and to be able to come into your presence as well. I do pray you are having a dry and safe day where you are. The rain has subsided a little bit here. The ground is overly saturated. I will need rubber boots to get out, but that's okay. Fashionably sensitive with my rubber boots. The sky is extremely overcast. Um, I see a crack in my window there. It's very gray outside and I think there's more rain on the horizon. So please stay safe if you're going to have to leave the house this morning. Now, 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 I want to thank you for joining me this morning, but I want to remind you also of what our broadcast schedule is like for today. Today is Wednesday and so Following this, there will be noonday prayers at midday. We will not be having children's Bible minutes today. Unfortunately, I have to make a quick run out of town to conduct some additional church business, and I doubt I will get back in time. So there will be no children's Bible minutes at 2.30, sadly. But, but, at 5.30... There's going to be evening prayer. And then I will share shortly a link for Vespers, which is going to be done by the churches in the West. And that is 7 p.m. via Zoom. So I will share the link for that. And I will see you in that this evening at 7. I want to invite you to join us for any or all of these broadcasts. And I want to thank you for your continual support of the work and the ministry of the Anglican Diocese of Belize. Let's wrap things up here.
we're going to wrap things up with our prayer of dedication, followed by the dismissal, the grace, and then our final hymn. Let us pray. Almighty God, we thank you for the gift of your holy word. May it be a lantern to our feet, a light to our paths, and a strength to our lives. Take us and use us to love and to serve our persons in the power of the Holy Spirit and in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Brothers and sisters, may the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all, now and forevermore. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. We're going to close off this morning with one that I learned of a few weeks ago. I hope you enjoyed it when we played it the first time. <laughs> this one is entitled, uh, what's it called now? It is called All Earth is Waiting. And let me tell you, it's an Advent hymn. And yes, all of us are waiting to see the glory of the return of our God. I do pray you have a blessed and beautiful day. Do all you can to keep yourself and your family safe. Until tomorrow morning, same place, same time. <laughs> God bless and bye for now. <laughs>